Okay, we're well, walking by here today. I noticed something a little different. So, uh, the time has come. It's been five years. That fan's got to go. So, it makes a horrible noise. And uh, the new one's going to be DC with six speeds, a built in timer, uh, Alexa control. So, if you lose the remote, you can turn things on and off. And, uh, should be quieter and I think a little prettier, though this one's not bad. I think this one's going in the kitchen. So on closer inspection, I went to take this ring off, like, I don't remember that thing, but I see this. So maybe this moving around was making some of the noise. I don't know. I, it's hard to tell. There's some dust up. Maybe it's been touched in five years. Um, 2017, yeah, five years. But I'm not sure how this thing comes off. Ah, great. This should be fun. Well, it only took a few minutes. Some ugly flashbacks to the stupid wiring code that they did. They used four wire. So, this one and this one are power. Whoops. Light and fan or fan or light or something. I don't remember which. And uh, I'd forgotten about this thing. This thing was a pain in the ass. This is the... Uh, add-on kit to make it work with the remote and it was a pain to wire because i had all these extra wires in so well, she's a little dusty but uh she's off and uh, that nice flat light kit makes it easy to uh put her on the floor without flopping around okay so um this is real glass which is nice and these are real wood believe it or not they're light I don't know what kind of wood they are and uh, I got the remote paired. Remote's got lots of options, so uh, I can change the light to yellow to cool. I guess it just toggles. I can make it on, I can turn it off. Okay, so I can just change the colors. And then um, make it brighter, less brighter. Okay, so it's got some toggle issues. Uh, then I can turn the fan on. So the next step is going to be making her smarter. That should be interesting. At least I got the remote to work. Remote's got some dedicated buttons. So light on, light off, fan off, fan on. I don't know what the nature does. I think it's supposed to create like a, a wind on off. Focus. That's reverse. Oh, yeah. I got to hold that. She's going. I'm not sure what nature does. So we're going to have to do some reading on this. But um, so far, I like it. Well, it's uh, Wednesday. I woke up, it was raining. It was snow on the cars. It's still raining, but I think it's about to stop. And then tomorrow, I think we're going to work on the porch. But uh, it's like... 48 degrees, so I did manage to clean those up. I'm gonna store those in the basement. Why, I'm not quite sure. Um, should fix that leak. So, I did my last, final, last, last, last pour a uh, little bit ago. So, we're just touching up the end pieces. It takes three days to dry. I've got the heat elator on out here, set to 65. There's the heat elator. Um, Hopefully it'll warm up anyhow, but uh, I can't move it with the truck until at least all the parts should come in tomorrow night. So Friday, so Friday, Saturdays. So we're looking at Monday-ish. Um, but it, I just wanted to get the last pieces done anyhow. It's easier to do it now. Then they'll be smooth. and So a lot of epoxy. Every time I look at this, I forget. What's that down there? Looks like a penny. 
why it is a penny. You can't really tell color-wise, but... Yep, so, uh, of course, uh, <sighs> I poured way too much epoxy. I've got about a half inch there, so I'm going to go find a project that needs a epoxy. Okay, well, we got brand new tires on the front. I had the tire shot confirm that there was a problem with the tire. They said it was wildly out of round. Uh, they think some of the internal belts separated, which would make it bounce up and down not only out of balance but physically move up and down so well, we're going to take a test drive that we also got our backing plate so our rear discs our, our rear parking brake are drums and they fit on this plate well the plates you know super freaking rusty and non-existent i mean there's some there but it wasn't going to last so um, I got a new backing plate. Unfortunately, I checked out on the interwebs and um, yeah, well, I got there. Not only did I need to get it to this point, I got to take those nuts out here, remove the whole thing, pound the nuts out because they seat, they're uh, pressed in so the nuts will be on the other side the head of the nut will be on the other side of here on that hob through the flange and then bolted and they're only 150 pound torque nuts so this shouldn't be difficult to do this is one case where having it up in the air would be handy because then i get you know hang on the bar so yeah we're going to be playing with that so we'll be uh having fun with that it's been raining all day today and it just stopped about an hour ago so those came about an hour ago too. So, test drive. Okay, well we got three of the nuts off. I put the beast with that big socket there and it wouldn't fit in the space allotted. So I used this guy. Of course, this guy was one piece in the beginning. She's now a multi-piece and it got the nut out impressed the hell out of me on the first one I'm like damn this is easy then the second one kind of broke so then I'm using the breaker bar breaker bar plus pipe so like I had it out to by here just kind of and then uh eased it out with that um, I don't have an impact version of this size I need to get one because that didn't work. Um, good news or bad news? It's not a Craftsman. I have a Craftsman. Craftsman, I could get a new one for free. But I don't want to break my Craftsman. So, uh, the only other issue is, took a long search, the missing nut has been located over there. So we gotta go get that in the bushes. Well, I'll just start up the truck and move. Nope, nope. Okay, there we go. She's off. I just got to transfer that plate and put the new one on. Uh, of course, the pads don't show up until tomorrow for the uh, parking brake. So this is just preparation prior to actual installation. So at first I thought maybe an animal was peeing above. That's happened in some cases around the house, but there's no way that the water would get all the way through the tar paper, the layer of wood, the layer of wood, and this. So I looked up, and sure enough, this manifold valve was leaking. You could see green stuff on it. So I did the right thing, and I put a plug on it. So basically, I crimped a piece of PEX on here with a PEX plug on there, and I opened it up and hit full of water, and it's not leaking. So that's one leak fix. Unfortunately, I got a toilet that's running. I replaced the flapper, and it's still going, so... I'm just going to tear it all apart tomorrow. That's the right thing to do. Well, it's Thursday. It stopped raining, but it's still cold and wet out there. Um, so we're moving on to our another next project that's on my list. So these are the original windows to the house. So they're over 100 years old. And I've stripped and painted these. And um, I bought interior stained windows. So that's plastic with foam around it. Um... Obviously, I got some issues with the 
when I do the trim, like that's not connected to the drywall. This is sticking out a bunch. And so I'm gonna have to get creative with that. Anyhow, um, so today's goal is to fix what should have been fixed originally. So you'll see there's a bunch of um, insulation shoved in there. Well, a year ago, maybe two years ago, I kept having icicle issues in this area and I noticed that they were leaking. So I opened this up and found that there was absolutely no insulation in there. So, which was a little frustrating because the people that did the insulation also did the siding. You think that they would kind of, you know, it wasn't like the plumber not concerned about the electrical. Anyhow, so I sprayed a can of spray foam in here and uh, air tighted that. However, on the other side, which if you didn't have the foam there, you will see, um, is the cement board. And it's not, it's coming off. It, it, it's popped out. So um, it's kind of hard to see from this side. So we're going to be outside on a, on a um, ladder in a bit. Um, so today I want to put some two by four scraps in about three inches and put them in like this way, uh, three of them, and then tighten, not tighten, um, attach them through screws through here. So I've got some stainless steel T25 torque screws that will go in there. So what that will do is um, tighten this up, but also more importantly, it's going to give me a place to attach real screws instead of little thin nails um, all the way from the outside in. So I'll pre-drill a hole and just zip, zip, zip. So I want to get that center piece locked in. Then I'm going to go back and to deal with the piece that's going around the outside. Um, after that, I got to find the, uh, the hardware for these because um, like this window is supposed to be up. This will seal a lot better if it's up. So I got to clean on this and uh, get this to go up and then put the piece here that shows it up there. Um, I've got weather stripping on some of these, but you can see right here, I ain't got nothing. So I need to pull this out, put some um, brass metal weather sealing similar to uh, this. And uh, those, that does a pretty darn good job. So if I can get that sealed, then I'll fix these nails I shot through and uh, clean these edges off and maybe add a piece along here. Um, I should be able to, you know, get this a little bit tighter, get it so the siding doesn't look like it's gonna fall off. So that's just the two things. And I think I'll clean the this off while I'm here with the razor blade. Looks like this got stripped, but never really finished. So yeah, that's let me loose. And this doesn't seem to be going up there like it should. Oh, and there's a big crack right there. Yeah, that, that's good. That's, yeah. So, anywho, that's the goal today, windows. Well, on this side, you can see this board's coming out a little bit. Underneath here, you can see there's a huge gap. This was caulked flush, so it's flush and then it pops out. So right about here, oh, yeah, you can even, well, you can kind of see me moving it. It's not going to see moving. So definitely need to figure out where to pull that in, uh, which pulled the window out, which doesn't help. They didn't use very big screws here. So ironically, the piece I thought was the problem isn't. It's this bottom piece. So kind of just need to dig around and look at my pictures and see what's underneath this. The other approach is to pull it out. And that might not be a bad approach because this caulk has failed because it's not sticking in. And uh, these little tiny snails they put in here don't seem to be attached to anything. So I may just do that. So we're gonna go take a look at the other side and see what I can see. But yeah, you can see this is not helping. But now that I'm up here, I can definitely see that this pushing out is what pushed that out. Um, ice got back here too, so that's not good. You can kind of see the water stains up there. Oh, and there. Um, well, so this is a two-pong approach. One is to uh, pull this back in, fix these, maybe even caulk on them. They should have been caulked. Looks like there's a little bit of caulk. Definitely could use bigger screws. And uh, the other approach is to uh, in get it water from not coming out in the first place. So, anyhow, glad I came up here and looked. Okay, so 
I, I pulled out some of the screws they were using and uh, I'll give you an example. So this is the thickness of the trim. It is more than one inch. And these are the screws they were using. So only had maybe two threads, three, because you got the distance of the uh, window and then you've got the pointy part, so not a lot. Now, of course, on this with this, the size I should have used, you know, this is going in a bit, like three times as much. The other problem is he caulked it, so it wasn't like, there was caulk behind the storm window in some areas. So when I went to pull it in, of course, it was caulk back there. So I had to clean all the caulk out. The other problem is he should have been using these to uh, attach the trim to the structure. So as I look at this, these pulled in about a half inch. Those are going right in. So over here, this one, unfortunately, that was a miss went right into the window frame, so solid wood. So I'm gonna put one in here, and that's gonna pull all the way back to there, cause it's gonna, whoops, go all the way into there. Um, just kind of tight, well, I'm gonna put two in there. The other thing is pre-drill it. This is concrete, so you gotta give it a little room here. This is where I kind of clean things up, but now, I'm gonna be able to pull that in. And I couldn't before because of the uh, concrete. This is ugly, I need to paint that. Okay, with the exception of this one, uh, I got this tighter, I got pulled this back in. Uh, I gotta put a screw there. I got this pulled back in, you don't see any light back there. Um, I got this and this one going all the way into the sill. I'm gonna fill this up with some, uh, whatchamacallit, some, uh, you know, whatchamacallit, um, insulation at a later date. And uh, yeah, this isn't going anywhere. I can hang out this. Fortunately, I saw up there. So I think I've got the same problem. That top board pulled out and then messed everything up. So I'm gonna have to put my spread around and get all the way up there, but I'm gonna leave that for a little bit. Uh, put this last screw in here and uh, just kind of clean on her a little bit. Wipe her down. You know. Come back to that now. Okay, because we can, we're gonna flatten this out and just kind of clean that up. I don't know what happened there, so I got the duck bills. This will clean things up. Okay, so I get the storm window back in, and uh, I'm gonna go up there and push on that very top board. See if I can make it go in a little bit in the middle. Uh, worst case is I think I can suck in that middle piece in, which might something not sure but that the board's got to go in I think but uh it's looking better definitely uh I can't yeah you can see it there I'm gonna clean up on that while I'm up there okay moving back to the Ford I uh, did some Google or YouTube watching and apparently this seal that is pressed in which holds the bearing in uh, which has like pieces floating around there's a piece on the hub and as well as uh this piece fell out this round piece and that's by design when you when you pull it apart usually the the seal just comes right in half uh, like a lot of bearings and you pull a bearing half of it comes with the hub and half stays on there so we got to pull this out i ordered a new one um i don't know if i said this before but parts are tickling in um i got the brake drums drum kit and I got the differential replacement cover because the back of the differential, I need to change the fluid um, as well as the cover's leaking. It's it's rusted through, but we're gonna take this out. I'm probably gonna try and use the right tool. I mean, what the hell? And uh, get this ready for uh, when the seal comes in tomorrow. Okay, um, got it out. Don't know if it's been replaced before because it looks like somebody put sealant in there. Uh, these are all the pieces that were there and the other half is still on the car, so this goes in there, on the, on the truck, I, I don't know. Uh, the bearings look fine, they smell, but they, uh, it's just a tad bit of wear on them, the surface looks good in there. So we're going to clean that up, and uh, we'll have to uh, put some gasoline in there, some kerosene, and just got to let those soak, but uh, so far everything's looking good bearing-wise. I was afraid because it overheated several times, um, like 
20. Um, the, the bearings might have been bad, but no. Just got to figure out how to take this other end off, because this one's going to be a little mystified. That's slowly drying. That's the cover for the differential. We're going to pop that out of the box in a little bit while it's daylight and make sure that it fits. There's some questions as to which model this was, and I'm 99% sure it's the right one. But uh, yeah, I don't know how to get this piece off. So go watch the YouTubes. I think this is... So I went up on the uh, porch roof there and blew all the leaves off. My blower doesn't reach that high, but uh, he's got the gutters clean that area and clean the gutters a little bit on that area. So uh, next step, I gotta cut these leaves along here, and then um, I gotta blow them back and just cut the leaves. I'm using the gas mower because it mulches better than electric. The electric one just doesn't do it. So I'll lower the wheels all the way down and just slice and dice, and then just blow it all back, and then a second time on the grass. <laughs> That's uh, why I needed to replace the wheels a couple weeks ago. So um, running them over two or three times kind of makes them a little powdery. And then I just blow that back up there and we'll continue on. Okay, so we got the rest of the parts today. Those are the two seals. One seal for this side and then when I do the other side, um, basically it's this whole beast. And uh, this pounds into there and then this piece ends up on the axle housing, I guess, because the axle's out. Uh, that was this piece that I pounded out. So this is the old one, so it comes apart when you rip it apart, because it wasn't gonna slide off of that. That thing was pretty stuck on there. So theoretically, this is the same as that, which it is. So now we'll just file this over there all my other parts so uh, probably well I gotta clean the bearings out there in here with some gasoline or kerosene I got some kerosene I just need to clean all this out and then um, I can assemble that the bearing goes on there and then uh, put the backing plate on where'd that sucker go where are you back oh there you are brand new backing plate then uh, once I got that on I can uh, put the parking brake parts on, which got a box around here full of parking brakes. Once I get the parking brake on, then I can slide the hub on. And then um, I got to deal with the front bearing. Um, I, there's no seal for that because on the outside of the shaft, which is right there, there's a little oil seal there. And uh, I don't know why. But I ended up getting these. They're like $14 in Ford parts. And there's four in there. So I only need one, theoretically. And maybe two, theoretically, not four. So I have plenty. But I'm going to check that one. I may reuse it as it wasn't leaking. Then we clean up those bearings and put all together. We tension this at 60 pounds. And then we back six clicks off, five clicks. And then I can change the rotor or the, um, the caliper which point I gotta bleed that. I'll take two people or one person who has the right tools. I guess that'll be me. Then we put the rotor on, put this all back together and take it for a test drive tomorrow. So hopefully she'll be back on the road because I wanna take these next week to go get sanded down and be done with this. And while these are out, we're gonna spray paint and clean up the legs. Let's look underneath the skirt here. Yeah. So, uh, reminder to self, uh, when I go to Harbor Freight tomorrow, because I got to get more insulin, because I dropped the insulin, or this guy dropped it for me, and I can't find it. Unfortunately, I have some backup insulin, but, um, yeah, I don't think it was that one, because I've seen this one play with it. She bats the needles right off the table as I'm doing it. She loves a little plastic cap and plays with it for hours, because... Ah, that's just her. Um, anyhow, so I need to get a couple blankets because they're on sale for $4. Because uh, I need to put a blanket in there when I slide these into the bed. Though I might have a couple over there. No, I just need to get a couple. I can never have enough of these. So, yeah. Hopefully next week I'm uh, finishing this up. That will be nice. That will be cool. I must say, though, it is really nice having a 12-foot table here. It's very handy. I just put things not where the epoxy is drying. At least I think I did. 
So yeah, we're proceeding. So I got the, the brakes on and uh, the springs. That was a pain in the ass, these little clips. They're um, super duty. <laughs> and um, I put the oil seal on, but um, I needed a piece of information that I didn't have and then I forgot the piece. So I've taken it off very carefully and hopefully she's in good shape. She looks like she's in good shape. Shape, good. Uh, but uh, this is the piece I've got, this little metal piece. It's called an oil slinger, and I didn't know which direction it went. Now I know it goes in like this, and it fits inside there. So it's supposed to sling the oil away from the bearing seal, I guess. So we're going to pound this back in. She still looks pretty good. Yeah, that was fun. So last night I went to put the hub on, and I found the spring there the top the orange one and kept hitting and uh so i just said fuck it but um i looked carefully at some videos and uh despite me using the old brakes as an example i got the springs backwards so that orange spring goes on the other side the big one which is why it doesn't interfere and the little one goes on the front and then i got i got the whole thing backwards and that little that one the green one goes on the front like this way this way this way like this way not that way this way so yeah so uh, I'm gonna try a different way of dealing with this I gotta take that all apart but I'm gonna try this new technique and done that was easy so we got the springs in the right place and now there's clearance here for the hub to go in so I'm gonna just bang on this and bring these up a little bit and uh, go to the next step. That was not easy. But I think I learned some tricks on getting those in there. I actually use channel locks to compress those little black screens on the outside. Kind of look like that. And that uh, allowed me to put that pin in. So basically this pin goes through and then you twist it while you're pushing down really fucking hard. Fucking piece of shit. Okay, so the hub's on. I tightened this to 60 foot-pounds. I'm gonna have to back it off. Some clicks, I gotta research that. I think it's seven clicks. This literally uh, clicks. Well, not right now. Maybe now, we'll go like, <sighs> I can't do it one-handed. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm gonna clean these threads out. So I've got the bolt. And then I found a tap, the same thread pitch and the same diameter. So I'm going to spend a few minutes cleaning out whatever that is, 12, 10, 15,000, another 18 millimeter. Well, a closer inspection, these are actually not the exact same thread pitch. So, yeah, we're not going to use that. Okay, well, since I can't clean out the old fast I'm going to use the old Craigslist rebuild and just kind of spray on her. Just gonna get in all the orifices. Yeah, yeah. This done. So like brand new then. I should probably clean that off too. So clean. Okay, so we uh cleaned this up with some um laundry dryer sheets and Break clean and got a lot of sconji shit off. Um, so now we got to get this to just get in the splines. So on the other end of the differential there. So apparently just jiggle it around. She fits in the hole. I assume the gravity is working against me. I don't know where the hole is. So this sounds familiar. We'll, um, We'll do two handers on this for a bit. When we're done, and this slides in, we're gonna then liberally douse this with some trans uh, differential fluid. That's the wrong fluid, but for what we're doing, it's the right fluid. We're gonna drain the entire thing after we take it for a test drive. Believe it or not, the original goal is to swap the caliper out. But uh, yeah. So uh, found some blue Loctite. I'll just put a spudge on there. Huh. Oh, this thing's got a, a blocker, so 
we'll just kind of coat all these. I'm only going with uh, where the thread locker was when I took it out, so didn't seem to be all up in the nether regions here. She goes in a bit before she even engages, so about that far. So these are all Loctited, I know, because you just saw me do it. Nice spooch. Okay, so we torqued these to 128 foot pounds. That was fun on my back, pushing up 130 pounds. And then uh, pop these new metal clips in for the brakes and clean the, the pads outer rust. The pads are in good shape. They're, I'll replace them in a few years. Sprayed the heavy duty corrosion inhibitor. It's from Marine or Northeastern Ohio. So uh, next step is to pop the new caliper in. We went inside and Googleated on uh, all the values and I found a website that had every freaking torque value. Actually too much because I just need the brakes. So I think this is a 37 foot pound. So once I got the caliper mounted, then we're gonna transfer over the hose, lose this, then, uh, then we gotta do the fun job of bleeding the brakes. Well, getting closer to driving today. Okay, well, um, took it for a test drive to Garrettsville and uh, went to the Hart store to see if they had a fill plug for the differential that I could replace. They didn't. But uh, in the meantime, I was able to um, recycle big oil containers over there. So it was about seven gallons. That was nice because the one was definitely full. While I was there, I looked at their bargain table and uh, wow. So. This is automatic transmission fluid. It's royal purple, which is really good synthetic. And it meets every freaking standard that I have. The minivan, check. Prius, check. Olivia's Toyota, check. And that, that's all the cars that we have that are automatics, uh, with the exception of that one. And guess what? It does that one, too. It has Ford Mercron 5. Bam. 225. So I bought all they had, which is 6. We'll stockpile that up there. Top shelf, because it is top shelf. Uh, then we went to get insulin for Spike, because the cat knocked over the insulin, and it rolled I don't know where. And I didn't notice it till Friday, Thursday night when I went to give him insulin, that there's no insulin. So, um, yeah, we uh, had to get that. For some reason, Walmart's the cheapest. That would be the said cat. She's going to get fixed on Monday. I don't think she thinks she's broke. She's loving outside today. Uh, so we start with the Harbor Freight, and we got these. These are like Caniptics, so these slide easily, and uh, we'll try that out shortly. Parts holder, because I keep losing them. And then uh, another moving blanket, because that's going to go underneath this, um, and it's it will fit the bed, pretty much. It's 72 by 80, 80 is, uh, yeah, we'll fit the bed. So uh, we're going to do, uh, oh, picked up the Diffy fluid, so... Uh, Ironically, they have these new plastic ones, which is really nice because they're flexible. I can, you know, move it around. But it's also synthetic, and this is kind of neat. It has the limited slip additive built in, so I didn't have to spend another $7 for that. So we're good to go here. But I realized I should just replace on this. So by replacing this, I mean replace the shield in the inner brake pads and I do a little, you know, Craigslist cleanup. Just kind of make it look shiny and shit. Um, because when I open this, I'm going to drain more out. Then, when that's done, probably tomorrow, we'll attack the leaky differential cover. And that's when we'll use the new fluid. I did put some of the wrong fluid in there just to get it going. Now, um, as far as the test drive goes, that one's a little warm. We were, the problem was we, our brakes were rubbing. Whether it was the internal ones or the external ones, I don't know. These are hot. These are still hot. Why? Why are you still hot? That shouldn't. I wonder if that hose is bad. It can't be. This one's lukewarm. Well, it's warm. But it's not hot. These are usually hotter than the rear. And they are. I don't know. It's not boiling hot like it was before because it's just going to Kent and back cause some grief. So uh, I figure one hour and 15 minutes to do this. 
So the clock will start in five minutes. So this goes a lot faster when you know the right tools and you know which tools you need and you read that made the difference. So um, yeah, this one's almost as bad, but so you can see there's some weight reduction here. This piece here is what that piece here is supposed to look like. I mean, it's completely missing there. The pin hole, it's maybe in there. So, uh, and these pads are, these brake pads are shot. I mean, they're pieces coming off, although that one's not too bad. But, I mean, again, it's not, there's pieces missing there. So, uh, yeah, this, this didn't come off easy. And you can see here, barely rubbed and there's grease in there. So I think this was leaking. So I'm gonna probably have to use that seal on the outside of the axle because that's definitely grease. That's not good. So anywho, uh, next step is to pull the hub off, which uh, wasn't coming off. So I took the rotor off. It, I thought I was gonna pull it off in one piece, but it really didn't need to. So we got a Bertha. Bertha, she doesn't mess around. So this is actually an excellent picture here because you can see the little tabs I got to press in. So basically, I got to compress this spring back, push those tabs in, slide this out so the cable's out, and pull it out, then twist this out. It's like uh, acrobatics. So got the bearings out and I'm cleaning everything up. I've got most everything clean and I'm ready to start. And uh, I finished cleaning this and then I found that. Somebody was a little harsh there, so... I'm gonna have to get some sandpaper and sand that down, but that, that pitting's bad. I don't know who went to town on this, but uh, this side was also leaking too, but I can feel that coming out. Okay, so I cl clean up the ac axle. Uh, I just got a pop-up reminding me to pay my work American Express, which is problematic because it's $3,000 and I haven't done anything to pay that. Um, anyhow, uh, I think this seal is leaking and you can definitely tell the seal is barely protruding above here. So uh, we'll make a mental snapshot of that and uh, put the new one in and see if it sticks out more. But I'm pretty sure that was leaking. Well, that one seems to stick out a little farther, so hopefully that'll be good. Remind me to put a lot of lube on that before I put it on. Definitely clean this up. I do find this amusing, like why that mark is there.